So, Allie, you're from originally from Maine, and now living in Brooklyn. So, how'd you get here? How'd you get there from here? <laughs> um, well, I grew up in. Uh, well, I went to high school in Brunswick, Maine. It's a coastal town. And um, when I graduated high school and started writing music, I started performing in Portland, and then that led me down to playing more in Boston. Um, and I considered moving to Boston, but I had a couple really um, close friends in New York who urged me to come this way. So um, when I was 20, I moved to New York and I've uh, been here for a decade. That's a pretty good city, too. I, I would have I stayed in Boston, though. <laughs> yeah, Boston is great. Um, but, you know, the, the thing was, it was, it was pretty uh, meant to be because at the time I had a really cool car. I had this, um, like... Uh, Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Ooh, nice. And yeah, and I I loved it, but I found out when I took it into the shop that the frame was rotted. Oh. And I found this out like right around the time that I was deciding where to move. And I thought, and it was winter time, and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go to New York where I can I can just junk my car and I can <laughs> I can walk around easily and get around easier, you know. So yeah, it really part of my decision came down to friends friends there, and part came down to just like <laughs> the mobility of it. It all worked out in the end, though, right? It did. Good. So, I love your, your latest album. Um, and I, I, Before we get into the album, I, I want to talk about deep love moments. I love the idea that you came up with having the, uh, the post on Twitter where people oh, can, yeah. can go on and, and post their deep love moments. It, I guess there's no parameters for a deep love moment. It can be something you witness between strangers or experience with one. It can be a gratitude for a person or animal, a memory yep. of someone you miss or love, a story of someone doing good in the world, no matter how small. It, it just a great idea. And I'm going to be looking out. <laughs> whenever I see something like that, I'll definitely try to take a picture and, and post it on there. Yeah, it's, it's just something that I felt inspired to do because I think, you know, we, we walk around busy all day long and sometimes forget to look around and see the kind things that are happening around us or, you know, the little moments. And I see them all the time. I literally just saw one five minutes ago. I was walking by a woman with a walker coming out of the subway and another woman, even older than her, rushed over to help her out of the subway oh. and, and held, held her walker for her so she could get situated. And, you know, like sometimes we're so busy, we don't even notice that stuff. Right. And like, I feel compelled. It, it's just inspiring. Like I feel compelled when I see someone do something kind to, to tell them, like, hey, I saw that. That was really lovely. That's cool. I, th I think one of the things I really like about you in your career is that you're such a positive person, mostly. And this is just one one example in that you're also being a role model for other people and inspiring others to take that a positive approach. Yeah, I, I think it's important right now um, to oh, try yeah. to to try to not get too bitter with what's going on in the world, especially. That just makes it grow, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, little, little flaws off the album. Does this explore an early stage of a relationship where you begin to learn more about a partner and including their little flaws? Yeah, yeah, I, um... I wanted to write a love song that also um, wasn't afraid to lyrically touch upon, uh, you know, like people's imperfections and and my own. You know, there's a line in there about um, uh, there's a line in there about me getting frustrated and having a temper and like throwing a baseball bat, and um, <laughs> that's like you know not the coolest thing to do, but nobody's perfect. And so I, did, I thought it'd be like kind of funny to write a song where you where I kind of touched on the annoying thing that I do and like maybe that my partner does and and kind of yeah make a song about how that's just part of it like you fall in love and you accept someone for all their little quirks and flaws and you ideally grow together and that's where the line like something there's a line like take take out the strange things we do you know like look mm. to look at the strange things we do like in a relationship, I feel like that's part of it. Like you notice, maybe like ideally you would notice in each other the kind of, you know, maybe 
things you do and and grow from them. Absolutely, that, that's part of a healthy relationship is is learning and growing together. Mm-hmm. I just I just thought it was such a beautiful song. I think one of the lines you talk about your partner's getting frustrated over the tangles in her hair and, and you're helping her with it and then later on she's helping you with something and, and then there was another couple you were talking about and just all seemed so cute and uh, put everything into um, perspective. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to do that with that song. Now, how about the next stage where those little flaws become big flaws? <laughs> Annoying flaws. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's the next That's album, like- right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the next album. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, establishing a relationship with another also about a, well, yeah, I think we touched is also about accepting your own flaws, right? Yeah, like ideally they are they kind of hold the mirror up to show you what you could work on. Yeah. Is, is this an exciting stage for you to, to be in this part of a, a relationship? Yeah, I mean it definitely was you know inspiring for the record to try to write music coming from a place of um you know more reflection as opposed to when I was younger and I was writing more like negative or like I don't know whiny is kind of a mean word to use for myself but like just like my perspective was younger and so this record I felt like I wanted it to be a little more reflective and a little more about me and my my thoughts and um musings on getting older and growing up i think uh, i read somewhere the, your first two albums were more focused on your observations of other people and then this one is more re- the reflection on your own yeah yeah i would say that's accurate well even in the tremor uh, you talk about the past as if it can kill you if you let it are you referring to holding on to the negativity of a previous bad relationship stuff like that yeah, or any just any any negativity that you know anything tra- traumatic, or anything that you know we dwell on as people um, from the past. You know, I, I'm basically yeah, in that course just trying to say, if you dwell too much on the past or worry too much about the future, the, your present will be completely ruined. Yeah, absolutely. You are so wise. You're a sage. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I hope people are listening. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your proudest accomplishment or achievement so far in terms of your music career? Um, oh, that's tough to answer because there are, you know, there are m- multiple things along the way, like little victories or um, something as simple as like, you know, I'm going out on the road in a week and um, a handful of the shows are headline shows, but uh, a, a several are opening for uh, the band, The New Pornographers. Cool. And that's a band that I've been listening to since I was 14, mm. like years, years before I even started writing songs. And so that to me is like, you know, a really proud accomplishment to, you know, to, to be able to play with a band that I really respect and have them like see the show and, um, you know, respect what I'm doing on a level it's it's really exciting for me and um you know to to kind of stay on that same vein of you know kind of accomplishing things now that my teenage self would not have ever fathomed I was just asked by my um my high school English teacher to come um give a presentation at my high school for uh, on songwriting and so which I never thought would happen to me because I, I really couldn't stand high school and had a terrible time. But um, <laughs> but I'm going there um, next month to basically like have an assembly um, with my school. And you know I'm I'm 30 now and it's I've, I've never spoken to teenagers about my work really. Um, so you know I'm really honored to do that. Like li- little things like that along the way that just kind of. Um, help me have gratitude for how far I've come. Yeah, absolutely. That should be an immense honor to to be called back like that. And I hope yeah. I hope we get to see it on uh, your social media posts. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to get it documented a bit. Maybe it'll be, become a, a deep love moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get approached by one of the students and they tell you, you know, what an inspiration you are. 
Yeah, I, I, I had a, a young girl who was a senior reach out to me and, and say she was a songwriter and um, that she's looking forward to meeting me. So even that in and of itself, just knowing she's in the, the audience listening like that, that makes it for me, you know. Oh, good. Can you relate to the movie Clerks in any way? You, you were you were once a video store clerk, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I haven't. You know what's funny about that? I probably haven't seen the movie Clerk since I was in the video store. <laughs> it's been a long time. We had a, we had a TV in there and we played movies during the day, and um, that's probably the last time I watched it. But um, yeah, I uh, I loved working at the video store. It was it was such a special time because it was when I started writing music. Um, so I was my two passions are definitely music and movies. So I was you know, re- recommending movies to people all day long and then working on my music afterwards. Um, it was a great place to be. And I think there's a second one coming out soon, right? Is there? I think so. Or maybe, no, oh, ma- maybe. no, there's a second, there's a sequel to, uh, Bill, uh, not Bill and Ted, um, Bob, oh, Silent like Bob. No, no, but I mean, uh, Silent Bob and, you know, there was Clerks, wasn't it? I don't yeah, know. Clerks was Silent, yeah, I think Clerks was uh, Silent Bob and, all right. Whatever. Yeah. I'll look it up later. <laughs> um, are you are you in a state of rebranding or um, changing your image right now? You, you're not, you're just going as Lady Lamb on the bill, right? Yeah, I'm still I'm still you know invested in that project. I'm sure one day I'll do a rewiring and maybe put Lady Lamb to to rest and start a new project with a new name and maybe a new sound. But um, I still feel like it's relevant to me and. Um, it, you know, I don't, I don't really see a need to, to change it at the moment. Hmm. I have uh, a question I ask everybody and, um, I'm going to put, put, put it to you now. As you're traveling around, going all across the country, across the world, is there any place you look forward to going because you know there's a favorite local dive where you can get your favorite comfort food? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I have spots all over the place, um, but I always like to stop at the Friendly Toast in Portsmouth. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a favorite of mine. Um, oh, you know, it's so hard because there's a couple spots that I love that I only know. I don't remember the name, you know, like the names of all the places get kind of jumbled, but if I was in that town, I'd know exactly where to find it. <laughs> yep. There's one in Bellingham, Washington that I always try to go to, like, whether I'm, whether I'm, usually it's when I'm on the way to Vancouver. Um, and there's one in Asheville, North Carolina. But yeah, that's, that's a favorite of mine, like finding, um, finding like those comfort food spots because being on the road can be really, um, uh, like make you feel like a little bit uh, untethered. Hmm. And, and so, you know, if, if you can kind of build out a routine along the way of places that you like to, to hit up, it feels a little more like home. Yes, absolutely. Food and, and uh, comfort, it, we'll, we'll do that, yeah. Yeah. Allie, uh, you're playing November 1st, uh, Friday, November 1st, at Gateway City Arts in Holyoke, Massachusetts, and uh-huh. November 2nd, uh, Saturday, in Columbus Theater, Providence, Rhode Island. And I hope everybody gets out there and packs the places, so it uh, just shows you lots and lots of love. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Thanks a lot, Allie. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.